Hello, my people. Hello. God, I've missed you guys so much. I have so missed you guys. Um, okay, well, uh, so since I've been gone, a lot of things have happened, and um, it's been a hard time. I mean, you know, uh, I ended up losing my job and losing my house. And, um, so right now, things are really up in the air as far as that goes. But the place where I'm at doesn't have a DVD player on the computer, and so I'm trying to find a computer in order to make these videos. Hopefully by tomorrow, I'll be able to get these off to you. Um, so anyhow, since I've been gone, <coughs> well, on my birthday, oh, well, okay, let me back up a little bit. Um, my, well, my birthday was September 10th, and about three weeks, four weeks before that, I had went to the Hells Angels Clubhouse in Las Vegas, and um, I went about four or five in the morning and I jumped the fence. <laughs> it's got like a wall and then like a black iron fence above it and then in front of the clubhouse, you know, is where they pull their motorcycles in and where they hang out and stuff, you know. And I jumped the fence, I pulled myself up on the wall and slipped through the cracks and <laughs> chained my bike to the fence and um, sat there for four hours until demanding that somebody talk to me because I had something to say, you know, because I needed to talk to these guys about what's going on in the world and about this child pornography, what I thought, you know, about the child pornography situation because Dave Burgess, the world president of the Hells Angels, um, went to prison for tens of thousands of pictures of children being used in child pornography. And I was really sad about that, and I thought for years that that was going on. And, you know, I want to get to the bottom of this and find out what the hell is going on. And so I went, and I sat for four hours, and then all of a sudden this girl that lives next door, um, she's related to one of the Hells Angels there, and she comes over and she, you've got to leave. And I'm like, no, I'm not leaving until some of the Hells Angels talk to me. And then she said they were at Sturgis, and they were going to be at Sturgis for a few more days. And um, if they would have been back that day, I wouldn't have left. But since they were going to be a few days, I did leave, though. But she was on the phone calling Hells Angels going, She won't leave! She won't leave! And, um, anyhow, though, uh, her name was Brenda. She had blonde hair and glasses that are kind of like the cat-looking eyeglasses or whatever. Anyway, um, so then, um, a couple weeks after that, I went to the clubhouse <clears throat> rode my bike because I knew that they had church on Friday nights and so I knew what time they had church and so I estimated about when they would be done with church and I rode my bicycle and I was riding my bicycle down Torrey Pines and um, you know and I could see out in front of the clubhouse you know a bunch of health angels and other people out, and girls you know out there hanging out talking in front behind the gate you know and I saw them and then I saw I could tell someone somebody saw me and then all of a sudden it was like all of them turned around and everybody was looking at me and I'm like, oh, I was so nervous. My heart was beating so fast. I wanted to turn around and go back. But I didn't. I kept on riding and I get there and, um, you know, some of them come out to the gate, come out to the sidewalk, you know, and, um, you know, a few of them they start yelling at me and especially this one guy, gosh, I can't remember his name. I think, I don't know why I keep thinking Junior, but I don't, he's got his shaved his head and he's like a really aggressive type, you know, a little taller than me. And anyhow, he's like, "Bitch, you need to get out of here." And I'm like, "No." He's like, "You can't be here. You gotta go." And I'm like, "No." And then Pee Wee comes out. He's like, I swear, he looks like he's about seven feet tall, and you know, shaved head and tattoos all over his arms, and he's real big, you know. And um, he comes out, and I see. I used to write to Pee Wee. Um, some years ago, you know, for a couple of years, I think, I wrote to him, and, um, because I only wrote, the Hells Angels that I've only ever wrote was Dave Burgess, Troy Regas, sometimes Flash, and sometimes, um, OB Dave, and, uh, Pee Wee. Those were, I didn't file it with anybody else, those were the only ones, because I knew, you know, I was trying to go where power is, because when I deal with any organization, the only way to deal with what's one's in charge is to get right to the tip, find out who's in charge. And, um, so, because Troy Regas is the owner of the Hells Angels Corporation, and some people might debate that, but it's true. When Sonny went to prison and the Hells Angels went broke and um, the Texas Mexican syndicate mafia took over the drug trade and stuff, you know, the Hells Angels were broken without a leader, 
and at Troy Regas and Dave Burgess, you, you renal renegades, and <clears throat> they were Hells Angels supporters, but around 98, 99, around that time, um, they became Hells Angels, and Troy founded the Nevada Hells Angels, but really what happened was him and Dave Burgess fought the Hells Angels Corporation. But, you know, like the Illuminatis and the, the people like that, they try to stay behind the scenes, you know, and nobody, none of you guys would have probably known that unless you know, I tell you, but I've made the point to find out these things, you know, I've devoted my life to find out what the heck's going on with the Hells Angels and the uh, Illuminati. <clears throat> and uh, the leader of the Illuminati is Queen Elizabeth II, and the leader of the Hells Angels is Troy Regas. Anyhow, so, um, the Hells Angels, you know, I was standing there, and they're like, you gotta go, and you know, and then Pee Wee, he started like standing over me, kind of, or by, next to me, you know, when he towered over me, but he was kind of like forming a protective place around me so that nobody would jump on me because you could, the girls were foaming at the mouth. You could see it because they hated me so much. What time did I start? Oh, I still got eight minutes or seven minutes. <laughs> um, and so um, I'm like, I'm not leaving. I got something to say. And I'm like, you know, I'm not leaving. And, I said, if you let me talk, I'll go. And they go, okay, if we let you talk, you'll go and you won't come back, you'll stay away. I'm like, yeah, you know, just let me say what I got to say. I go, how about five minutes? I go, no, wait, give me 11 minutes. And, you know, the one dude, the bald-headed dude, um, he runs a drug treatment program and stuff, too, by the way. Um, and uh, so I stated my case, you know, and I told him about, you know, well, it was just about, you know, the Illuminati and what's going on and, and the international human trafficking, child pornography, snuff film, kidnapping ring, wherever it's coming from, I want to find out if it's coming from the Hells Angels or not. Because, um, you know, because Dave Burgess, the world president of the Hells Angels, getting busted with those pictures and stuff. And so, anyhow, they let me talk, and it was kind of funny because, um, you know, towards the end and stuff, you know, they're like, okay, you promise you won't come back here anymore, you can't come here no more, and go, okay, and I'm like, well, can I ride by on my bike and wave? And then three different ones said, said you know, out loud, yeah, you can ride by on your bike <laughs> and wave. And um, so anyhow, um, then I had wrote to Pee Wee on September 9th and told him, I'm like, dude, you know, I'm getting kicked out of my place, you know, I, yeah, you know, I'm having a problem with money and rent, and um, I bought this car, with my rent money and the rent money for my roommates, which was so wrong and so bad. I know it was. I so, so, so bad. I just drank white Russian that day and I got all like, oh, do, 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 you know, and in my mind I rationalized that I paid for it. But anyway, I ended up making it to where we were all going to be evicted and stuff. And um, they're still there, but they're still way behind and still may, you know, be evicted. And I have to find a way to help them. God, help me help. Once I get my miracle, you guys are going to get yours, I swear. But, you know, I wrote to Pee Wee and I asked him if he could help me out and if there was a way that, you know, he could find me work or something, some way I could earn the money or get a loan in order to pay my rent. And um, so on September 10th, on my birthday, he actually contacted me and I was tripping. I was like, whoa, you know, and then we met, you know, he came over and he talked with me two different times. And, uh, you know, he was telling me too, you know, how all fucked up, you know, like they can't buy their colors like they used to, you know, go in a lot of public places and stuff, you know, and wear their vests all the time like they used to be able to do, and it's really too bad that the Hells Angels don't be, you don't get your glory, you know, the glory that can go with that, because there is a lot of power, the name is in, the fame is in the name, and so each one of you have an opportunity to use that fame that's in the name of the Hells Angels to make a name for yourself as an individual apocalyptic hero or Earth King or Earth Father, somebody to make legends, somebody that will be legends about and stories and songs will be written in your names and it's really so much potential here. And so I'm almost out of time. So I'm going to have to come back and finish this on the next disc that I'm going to make right now. Okay? So I'll be back in a second because I'm going to tell you what happened. Love you. Love you. Love you.